If you love the convenience of Google Photos, but hate the idea of handing your photo library over to a company built on ad tech, surveillance, and whatever they're doing with AI, there's a privacy-first alternative you should know about called Image. Image is a self-hosted, open-source photo and video platform that gives you an experience similar to Google Photos without sending all your data to the cloud. Your photos stay on your server and in your control. Image has features like automatic photo sync from your phone, object search and recognition, face detection, geolocation, and more, and it's all done locally. But of course, there's a catch. Image gives you privacy and control, but with great control comes great responsibility. If you're not ready to manage setup, storage, updates, and backups, it might not be the right tool for you. My goal today is to show you how Image stacks up to Google Photos and probably Synology Photos too. And I do want to be clear up front, Image shines when it comes to organizing, searching, and managing your photo collection, but it's not at all a photo editing tool as of version 2.3 here in December of 2025. And if you're here looking for a video of how to get Image installed on SureNAS or using it in Linux and Docker, you'll find those videos linked down in the description below. This video is not sponsored, but if you'd like to hire a short project or buy some swag from the store, head over to lawrencesystems.com where you can do so. The first couple of things I want to address is that yes, it's open source, yes, it's free, but yes, there's a buy image option up here. And let's talk about what that is. The reason it says buy or purchase image is to support the project. It is not required. It does not give you anything other than a little badge that says you're a supporter on your instance. That's all you get. So that is the only feature difference between paying or not paying. I chose to pay for this because I found value in it right away. I want to see future development of the project. But for those of you that are on a budget where you just want to try this out, or you just don't have the extra money to donate, whatever that reason may be, it is not a requirement. You still get the same version of image. But I do like that they're very upfront because it does take money to support these projects. Now let's talk about their roadmap. And this is the top of the roadmap of where they're going, but let's talk about where they've been. This has actually been around for a minute and we're scrolling all the way back here to 2022s when they kicked it off and got started. I was hesitant because I know this was getting more and more popular, but I was like, well, I want to wait till they reach maybe a 2.0 release because when I first set it up, I did find it just to be a little bit buggy. Come all the way and we'll scroll way up now to their 2.0 version. And that's where we're at now is the V2.2. I found it to be so far very stable. So Image does have apps in both the Apple Store and for Google, as well as F-Droid or just downloading the APK. But of course, the more complicated setup is the server side itself. But this is where people start to get hung up. System with at least four gigs of RAM and two CPUs. It doesn't actually have that high end of requirements. Now, the good news is it does support graphics cards because the image model will have to look at all these images and add context. Like we want to find all the cats in the photos. We want to OCR and we want to do some facial recognition and we want that all to be local. CPUs are less efficient at doing this than a GPU. But do you really need a GPU? And I'll use my setup as an example. I brought in 55,103 photos and 2,911 videos, which takes up 323 gigs of storage. I'm running this in my virtualization system that runs Docker. So it's just another container running on this with 20 cores and eight gigs of RAM. There's a lot more than just image running in this. And this is a reasonably fast processor, although it's about five years old. This is a Ryzen 9 5900X. This entire process of me going and they have a command line tool to do this. I imported all of these from Synology Photos, which I was using prior to image. When I did the import, it took a little while, not long to do the import, maybe under an hour, but the few hours it took to do the image recognition. Yeah, the system was pinning the processor. Now, once the images are indexed, everything is just pulled from a Postgres database on the back end. So there's not any reapplying each time I look for something like a dog of all the image recognition technology. Once it's been indexed, it's able to find all the dog pictures. So when I search for dog, it comes up absolutely instantly. You can do the same thing for cat. And it has anywhere that it sees the word cat because it does do OCR. So apparently that's a cat. And this is a cat as well. And there's some catacorn cereal. So I'm not sure if it picked up on the cat or the catacorn. That's a feature I hope they get in the future where it lets me know all the different metadata that's attached to any photo. You technically can dig it out of the Postgres database, but it'd be cool if it was on the sidebar here. Now, coming back to the question on the hardware requirements, it depends on how patient you are and how fast your system is and whether or not you have an extra GPU or iGPU or any of the supported at this time hardware acceleration options that there are. What I'm thinking even 
I don't know, 20 or 30 or 100 photos from my phone, that time is only minutes. When I imported the entire 50 plus thousand photos, yeah, it took some time, but once indexed, it doesn't affect the speed at which you're searching things. So you don't need to have a dedicated hardware graphics card all the time. You can always do it for import and indexing. But of course, this comes down to your scenario in your use case. Maybe your use case is you have a job that requires you to import 50,000 photos a day every day and you don't have time to wait, then yes, the hardware acceleration probably makes a lot more sense in that scenario. But I don't think it's to be one of those things people get really hung up on for home users that go, I just want privacy on my photos. Do I have to also spend a lot on a GPU or a bunch of hardware? Or will it eventually get done? And the answer is it'll eventually get done even on a low and processor. And once done, you can enjoy all the fast lookups. Now, because I'm comparing this to Google Photos, I want to start with the sharing option. Yes, Image has a really cool sharing option. Matter of fact, we go here and we see image.launchsystem.com. That's because I have a reverse proxy. For those of you that are trying to get to image.launchsystem.com, you'll find out I have chose not to publicly expose this. A requirement in order to share with the general public would be that you publicly expose it. That is up to you and your risk tolerance. As of the recording of this video, I'm not aware of any flaws or security issues where someone could potentially bypass the security of image to get into your photos. But that is the risk you have when you expose it to the greater world that if there's a flaw found and there are automated systems that sometimes exploit flaws and you don't have a patch for that flaw, you could be exposing all of your photos or have someone go in there and delete them. That is up to you on your risk tolerance. But let's cover the sharing in a little bit more detail. Of course, you can set up multiple users on yours and then you can share between those users and that part's really easy. You click the share button because we have to share cat photos. It gives us the option for a custom URL. We can set a password and Bitwarden's trying to help me and create one for it. We can set a description really cute cat. We can set an expiration, show metadata, allow public user to download as in someone who's not logged in. If you have this publicly exposed, obviously you'd be able to share this with anyone. So let's go ahead and create this link. It gives us a QR code to scan, or we can click the copy. I'm going to open up an incognito window that's not logged in, paste it in, and there's our cat photo. Now, if we want to get rid of this share that we created, or how do you track these shares? We're going to go over here and click on sharing. Then we're going to go shared links. Here are any of the links I've created for sharing and you have the ability then to edit if you wanted to change any of the parameters, maybe change it to really, really cute cat or set that expiration time that you didn't set before, hit confirm and that'll set the expiration time or any other parameters we wanna change or let's say, let's delete it. I don't really want this shared anymore and now we've deleted them. And of course the sharing feature doesn't just work with individual photos, you can share entire albums the same way, clicking the same sharing button and the same parameters come up. Now let's talk about uploading photos. Obviously the easy answer is click the upload button, choose the photos, it works perfectly fine. Next option is probably the most popular is phone cameras have become pretty amazing. Therefore, most people take photos on their phones and that's the goal is to get the photos from the phones. So let's go ahead and take a picture right here on my desk. We'll go ahead and snap this picture, open up image, it finds the picture and you see it spinning. All right, that picture is now uploaded. And you can see it changes to a little checkbox to let us know that photo is there, an image. And if we come back over to image itself and I refresh, there's that photo. Now I've offloaded, as in deleted, a lot of these photos from my phone. I chose to do that so I can free up some space, but I still have access to all of them because the image server has a little checkbox when the phone and image both have the same copy of the photo. And when there's no checkbox, you can see the empty cloud essentially that lets me know it's talking to the image server. And these are photos that are available that I can view or even videos that I can view right here right from my image server. And I'm on the same network with my phone and the image server, so it's quite fast to view them. Now, if you go to the settings in the image app, they do have a lot of options. So you can detail out how you wanna back things up, notifications, but specifically, I wanna mention the networking feature. I wanna point out under networking, they have the current server address, but you can do automatic URL switching because maybe you do have a publicly exposed version or a not publicly exposed version, and maybe it's a different URL for each of those. I like that they added that option. So when you're on a different network or only on a specific Wi-Fi, you would use a certain URL. They also do a nice job of giving you logs or even synchronization statistics. So if you're doing a lot of synchronization from your phone, especially the initial sync, you can see the status of those jobs and how much longer they have before they're done synchronizing. Something else interesting image has is the DLI tool. This is separate from actually setting up the server or your phone. This is an additional tool they offer that allows you to connect to your image server, point it at a directory and 
import all the photos it finds. I was using a combination of Synology and Google, and I still kind of use Google for some of my photos, but if you're using something like Google Takeout, it dumps a lot of photos into a folder. That's how I originally brought them into my Synology. So I just pointed it at that Synology folder and had it recursively go through and pull all those 50,000 photos in. Then if you're looking for something that pulls some more context in, if you're using Google, there are third-party tools such as this one that I think is really interesting. It is the Image Go tool that allows you specifically to pull in your Google Takeout. And if you're not familiar with what Google Takeout is, it's a way that Google, and I'm happy they still offer this, and I hope you're watching this in the future where they still do, allows you to export all the data that you've uploaded to Google. Specifically, you can just do the photos, do the takeout, download those photos. It also will have JSON files that have that extra context in there. And this tool is able to read those images and that JSON file, reassemble it, and upload that data to image. Now, what if you had your own library of photos structured the way you want? You don't have to change that and you can still use image and it won't change these. It will do a read only as it is just going to pull all the data from my other photos. I covered this in my setup video of how to add these into the library. Once you add them, you have the ability here to click scan. It's going to scan those. It's going to index them. It's going to add all the metadata to the Postgres database. So anything it finds out about the photos or any of the extra data it pulls through the machine learning, it's just going to apply to the Postgres database and match it, but it will not touch any of the photos on here. It's just indexing them. And you can click scan at any time to see if there's any new photos and add those as well. Or you can go over here to the settings, go down to external library. This is currently an experimental feature, but you have the ability to watch that external library for changes. Maybe that'll be out of beta by the time you're watching this or just set up periodic scanning. So maybe people dump photos in there and you say, Every six hours, go ahead and do an automatic scan and update anything new and add it to the image library. Now let's talk about how image organizes data. And I wanna start with the map because I really like the way this feature works. You have phones that have GPS in it and GPS allows me to determine what photo was taken where quite easily. And I love the ability to zoom in and say what photos I take. And this is actually at 45 drives, so I can click that. I know this is 45 drives in Nova Scotia. And if I wanted to know when I walked across the street here to their factory, this is pictures I took right inside their factory. You also have the ability here to narrow things down. Let's say I only wanna see places I went in the last year. So we hit save. I wasn't there last year. If we zoom back out, it'll show the photos from places I traveled this year, such as when I went to Kansas, Chicago, or a couple trips that I took to Northern Michigan. And if we move up to explore, you see at the top, we have people. I can click view all, and it's all the people that I've assigned names to, and all the ones I haven't will be in there. And if we go over here to places and hit view all, it groups them together based on cities. So instead of looking at the map, you can get specifically right to somewhere you took a picture. Now, currently in image, I have 55,000 photos. Yes, I added a few more photos since I started recording this video. And if we go here to the main page, we see our timeline. And those 55,000 photos stretch from 2001 all the way here to 2025. Some of them have metadata attached to them, some of them do not. And this is where image shines with its machine learning it applied to find things in photos. So even when we don't have metadata, we can do things like type in cute cat, and I'm not speeding this up, this is real time. There's our cute cat photo. We're able to find it that fast. What if we wanted to say cute dog? There we go, now we found a dog. I wonder if I have any mice in here. Let's look up mouse. Now it does OCR, so it found the mouse jiggler or maybe it cued in on this little mouse down here at the bottom. But when it can't find exactly what you're looking for, and I probably don't take a lot of picture of mice, maybe just a couple here, it doesn't always yield the best results. And I have no idea why it chose to assume this snail was a mouse. Now coming back over to search, you can do much more advanced search by filling out the search options. It lets you search not just by context, but also file name or extension, description, OCR. You can filter for certain people or multiple people if you want. You can add your context. The place or country, it only shows places you've been. So it doesn't list all countries. It only says Tom's been to Canada, United States, or some photos just are unknown. So you can drill down to places that don't have metadata by choosing unknown or filter for just things in California. You can also go down here and search by make of camera, model, or lens. Now, because phones will have their lens information here as well because some phones have multiple lenses. I thought it was kind of interesting because it lists which camera, like I can say specifically Pixel Pro, but front camera. So probably any selfies and we'll filter out that and we'll filter out this and we can then say only show me Pixel Pro front camera. 
and as expected, it's a lot of selfies. A few features I want to mention really quickly, they have the ability to list only photos you have favorited, they have the ability to put things into albums, there are some utilities for reviewing duplicates and large files, they have the ability to archive photos so they don't show up in your main timeline, and there's a locked folder option if you want to have some photos private that you can only unlock by putting in a pin. Now I'll admit, when Image first came out, I was a bit skeptical because I've watched these photo projects come and go, but they've shown some staying power. They've shown commitment to refactoring the code and making it better because it's a less complicated install today than it was when they first started. And the fact that they have a business model around it. I right away donated the server money because I thought that was a great donation. I have been really happy after importing the 55,000 plus photos and counting that I have. Now, is it a Google Photos replacement? Absolutely. Is the model quite as good as Google? Probably not, but it's always improving. It does a great job of indexing faces and finding things, but occasionally it misses some things. I actually think there might be a few more mouse pictures because I went back and looked for a few that I thought it should have found, but I'm kind of splitting hairs here. For most things that are prominent, not a small icon in the background, it does a great job of finding them. But those models can get better, and as they get better, you can just rerun those indexes again, re-update that Postgres database, and have those better detections. And to me, that's worth it rather than letting some big company like Google do this for me because I just don't have much faith in those companies anymore. What about Synology Photos? I've never had a good time with Synology Photos and their photo app. I used Synology Photos for a number of years, but it never really got much better than when I did the video about it a few years ago. It has some context that it can do, but it's not nearly as good as what Image can do, and it's a very far cry from Google. So the Synology app, I'm not unhappy about removing it from my phone. Synchronizing was just ah, annoying and it never really got better. Sometimes it would just stop randomly. And that just is something I have not had at all with image. Granted, I haven't used it for quite as long, but I take photos, they synchronize right away. It seems like it's a pretty simple task because there's plenty of other tools I've used like sync thing and that on my phone that never had a problem. The Synology app, just sucked. <laughs> I'll just say it. I ne never had a good time. And it's not just one phone. It's only Android, of course, because I never tried it on iPhones. So I don't have an iPhone, but all the different Android models I've had over the last few years have always had problems with Synology Photos. Maybe you had a better experience with it, but eh, overall, I never thought it was that great. But what do you think of Image? Is it right for you? Leave your thoughts and comments down below. Like and subscribe to see more content. Let's have a more in-depth discussion about this over in the forums at forums.lawrencesystems.com. And check out the links below if you're just looking for the install videos. I linked to one from Techno Tim. He's got a great in-depth video. I did one on Chernas. You'll find that link down below as well. Thanks.